Hey traders, welcome back to another Sunday video. Today you got a special edition since I'm on camera. I went into the office today just for you guys to uh, uh, make sure I got a good setups video going for this week ahead. Of course, in these videos, what we do is we take a look at things like gold, the S&P, the NASDAQ, currencies, commodities, all sorts of stuff. And we talk about the best setups that I'm seeing currently in the markets. If you enjoy my videos, I invite you to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, leave a comment on what you're trading, and let's go ahead and jump in. So last week we ended with a whole sea of red. We saw the S&P 500 down, the NASDAQ down, the Dow also down as well. Uh, of course, the US dollar index was up strong on Friday uh, with a bit of risk off sentiment coming in. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. The pound against the dollar was down, the euro was down. Gold actually slid lower towards the end of the day and oil gave back its huge gains on Friday as well. Of course, one of the main reasons that the market was on edge on Friday was, of course, that there was a concern about Israel uh, and Iran, some conflicts going on there. Uh, Israel on edge for Iranian retaliation after embassy strike. Of course, any sort of escalation in war or um, you know concerns in the Middle East have a really brazing effect when it comes to the stock market, to markets in general. That's probably why we saw gold spike and the dollar spike at the same time. That's good old fashioned risk off from financial markets, meaning people do not want to have risk in the markets. They want to get out of stocks. They want to get out of things that are sketchy. They want to get out of things that are risky and they want to go into safe haven assets. And arguably the best indicator of risk on or risk off sentiment would be the S&P 500. The S&P 500 had a tough end of the week. You can see we were in this really un, you know, impenetrable uh, upward trend on the S&P 500, but we've since gone sort of sideways. I wouldn't necessarily said, say we've, we've really broken bearish, but it's hard to deny the fact that a lot of things have changed in this market in recent times. Things like gold being up and oil spiking in price uh, amidst yields dropping and bonds getting a bid on Friday, that's just good old fashioned risk off in the markets. People are a little bit concerned. And uh, who's to blame then? The stock market has been in a really solid rip and uh, there's so much optimism baked into it. It does make sense that investors took some profits there uh, here on last Friday. The question is going into this week, will we be able to break this key level of support by taking just a technical approach here? We've not entered a bearish trend per se. We've just exited a roaring upward trend and entered into a sideways one off of the daily and the four hour charts. What I'm looking for personally when it comes to the S&P 500 is to watch uh, carefully to see if we actually do close below structure. Now, some might argue, you know, we've already closed outside of structure on Friday's candle. But for me, I'd like to see just a decisive lower low uh, before I really get any sort of bearish uh, biases going on the S&P 500. Do I think we have room to come down? I do think so. Uh, but the S&P 500 is a very hard thing to bet against, similar to gold. I know a lot of people are feeling that right now with the gold price going up. We'll talk about gold in just a moment, by the way. But the S&P, again, for me, I'm watching to see how we react to this support support level. If we do get, you know, buyers who come in and buy this dip, uh, it's possible that we do just push right back up into this consolidation and perhaps go sideways. Now, something to add before we move on from the stock indices uh, are that, of course, earnings season is upon us and bank season uh, or bank earnings kicked off earnings seasons on Friday. We, had, we heard from BlackRock, JP Morgan, and, um, you know, the, the numbers were good. I'll show you. Here's JP Morgan stock, for example. Um, why is it down so much? The numbers were actually good. They beat on the top and bottom line. The issue is that forward guidance was not super attractive to the financial market. And so for stocks that are experiencing an era recently where we have higher than anticipated inflation, the economy could uh, you know, be slowing, but there's, there's also just this big question mark on earnings season. Are earnings going to deliver? If the stock market is gonna stay up where it's at, stock earnings have to be rock star. That's the thing. We need to see earnings growth, otherwise this market comes down. That's the biggest indicator I see on the horizon for stock traders. We have an, a period of higher inflation, that is a given. We are dealing with that situation as a, you know, as a global society. But uh, the bigger question for stocks now is can earnings support prices in this area or is it time for this market to correct bigger on cooling earnings.
Let's take a minute now to consider what institutional money has been up to. We've got the commitment of traders data loaded in here on the edge finder. You can see the last update was April 12th. So this comes out once a week. So we've got the latest data. Let's dive into it really quick. So what we've got in terms of net positioning, um, and I cannot contain my excitement, I have to tell you right off the bat, um, we've added new assets to the edge finder. We got Russell, Copper, Platinum, and Silver. They are now available on the commitment of traders data as well as the top setups algorithm. If you already have a copy of the edge finder, get excited like I am because we got new assets. That's so exciting. Um, I love seeing new symbols and things added to the Edge Finder. It's a ton of work to get each one added because you have to find data sources for everything and then automate the whole process. It's not an easy thing, but thanks to our wonderful team at A1, uh, we've been developing this tool for two years and uh, more on that in just a second. Anyways, gold, oil, uh, the Nikkei, silver, the Dow, these are still your most bullish assets by institutional investors overall. We get this data from the Commitment of Traders data, as I mentioned, this is the CFTC uh, reported um, list. And so now that we have, this is our longer term kind of uh, indicator. This is what I like to think of as a longer term uh, positioning for, for institutional money. I wouldn't necessarily use this for shorter term trading, uh, but it is still useful to see that gold, oil, you know, these things are more heavily bought by institutional money than sold. That being said, where things get more interesting is the week to week filings, because in this section, what we can see is what they've most recently accumulated or sold. And that to me is very valuable information. And there it is, the NASDAQ is actually still being bought despite all of the chaos Seems like there's some appetite for the NASDAQ in the most recent CFT data. Same thing for the Dow and same thing for the SPX. So for my index traders, keep an eye on that. It's hard to deny what we see in front of us. There's also demand for bonds though, and that's something to consider. Gold got slightly sold for my gold friends. Silver, same thing as well, slightly sold there. Um, US oil sold, uh, which is interesting. I'm still in my oil position, by the way. And in terms of currencies, we got the US dollar here, slightly bid up in the latest filing. So figured we'd go through the commitment of traders data together there. And before we get back on the charts, let's take a look at some of our current top setups here on the Edge Finder. Now, uh, if you're new to using the Edge Finder, which I know a lot of my audience is, the high level breakdown of how this thing works, it pulls in a bunch of data, it then showcases that data in an easy to use platform. But one step further, it then has a built in algorithm um, designed by myself, by Frank, one of my, my uh, coworkers here at A1, and of course, um, our developing team behind the scenes. We've designed this algorithm to consider all of this data in various ways for each asset. So if you're somebody who trades oil or the NASDAQ or you trade gold, and you wanna see how all of this economic data is impacting fundamentally the story for these things, our custom built algorithm helps to assist that on the top setups page. This top setups page shows the overall output of all of the assets that we track, everything that is bullish and bearish. And you can see we've got some errors because we are still finishing up incorporating the Russell, uh, the copper market, uh, silver and platinum. These are our newest assets. Anyways, very bullish readings coming in hot here. A lot of dollar strength, dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD. Uh, platinum, copper, oil, silver. Now, why commodities getting such a strong bid? Well, I'll talk about that in just a second, but it is a common theme amongst the edge finder. This is why that I've, I've been trading so much of the commodities market. I've been long silver, gold, GDX, right? The gold miners. I, I've been very exposed to, um, you know, to oil, to all these things, the energy ETF. I've been very focused on commodities recently. It's because the edge finders consistently shown that's where the numbers are pointing out and it's worked out wonderfully this year so far. On the sell side, let's take a look at this, some bearish setups here. We've got some pound pairs, some currency crosses against the US dollar as US dollar strength looks really strong. The Nikkei getting a sell reading here, uh, UK 100 looking bearish. So there's your top bullish setups and your top bearish ones as well. Also, if you're a fan of the channel, you're a fan of our work, A1 Trading is my company. We build software tools for traders. I have a background in software engineering and of course trading. So combining the two is my business, A1 Trading. And we build some really powerful stuff. And I wanna just announce really quick that if you have not heard, we are currently doing our second anniversary sale since we launched the Edge Finder two years ago. This tool is the embodiment of you know, my, my trading journey, Frank's trading journey, and of course, many other thoughtful and experienced traders who have contributed to how this software functions. If you'd like to get a copy of the tool, get access to the commitment of traders data, retail positioning, fundamental scanners, our top setups algorithm, and so much more, 
don't miss out on this sale. This is the biggest discount that we do all year is our anniversary sale. So here's some information. Uh, down below in the description, you can find a link for the Edge Finder. Just head over to a1trading.com slash edge finder. And if you use code YTVIP at checkout, that will give you 40% off the product. And you can ask you can get access to all of these wonderful tools in a singular platform. Let us do all the hard software stuff. You get back to the trading stuff. And that's the beauty of having uh, you know a company like this that is dedicated to this mission. We love building this stuff and I hope you guys love using it. Well, I know you do because we get so many positive comments and we appreciate your support on uh, on this campaign. And this video wouldn't be complete if we weren't talking about the gold movement that we saw on Friday. My goodness, did you guys see that? This is just crazy. We had a massive, you know what the range of this candle is? Anybody wanna guess? I think my guess is like 4%, I haven't looked at it, but let's see. Uh, yep, J what? I don't have an editor for this video, but I know Chandler would have had fun like zooming in my face. I actually, I, I really did not realize that guys. That's crazy. It actually on the dot moved 4% um, on the day on Friday, which is a range that is very, very large for the price of gold. Uh, even on these huge up days, we didn't get near 4%. Uh, this is the last time that we had a 4% range. Uh, well, that's 6%, so that was even bigger. That was uh, towards the end of last year. Anyways, um, Gold is is something here interesting that I want to point out. A lot of traders commented on my last video saying, oh, here it is. The big sell is finally here. But can I just warn you for a second? If you're somebody who is super bearish on gold or you're stuck in a bunch of short positions, which I know I'm talking to a couple of you guys right now, so many people are commenting on my videos saying, Gold is overbought, gold is overbought, gold is overbought. I'm telling you, I'm a content creator that sees the comments and inf interaction of to hundreds of thousands of people. And what I wanna point out is that people make the same mistake over and over and over. When the market is trending up, they just keep selling it and selling and selling it. And then some of those same people comment back on my videos a week later saying, I blew my account, I don't know what I'm doing. And so I'm just warning you, just because gold put in a sell, think about where this, this chart is actually at. Yes, you could read into this candle, oh, there was some sell pressure that came in, but that's some sell pressure in the context of a massive bullish push. I don't necessarily think the run is over for gold. Now, that being said, I'm not chasing the price. I'm not, you know, I, I don't currently have a reading on the edge finder that's bullish for gold, but I do have one for silver. So silver actually is getting a stronger read. And real quick, I wanna show you why. Okay, so I wanna break this down because it's pretty cool how, we, how we've done this. What you'll notice is that I've got all four metals at the edge finder tracks, gold, silver, copper, and platinum on the same screen. Why are these so bullish relative to gold? Here is why. Yes, the first one is obvious the COT data, but look at the economic data section for a moment. There's a whole lot more blue for the same data on these three than there is for gold. Why is that? Well, there's some difference in attributes about these, these different commodities. Gold typically is more of a risk off safe haven place where people run to in economic turmoil. Whereas these things typically do well if the economies of the world are growing and demanding more raw materials. So things like copper and um, you know platinum and silver on the edge finder are actually getting strong readings right now because the US economy has actually been really strong relative to what people have thought. That's what our algorithm searches for. So right now, I actually prefer silver bullish setups as uh, over over gold. So that's my current reading. Now, when I took gold as a long trade, you know, the last few months, uh, it was a little bit different. We saw some economic slowdown. And that slowdown actually gave us bullish readings on gold. So right now, I actually prefer silver simply because the econ economic outlook for the U.S. has been really strong. We, we just came out of a manufacturing uh, PMI recession. Let me show you that really quick. So here's the manufacturing PMI data from ISM, and here's what you need to know. Under 50 is contraction in the manufacturing sector of the economy. Over 50 is growth. And we have not seen growth, 50.3, like we got in April 1st this year for a long time. So we're actually seeing some economic expansion. Not only that, the services PMI has remained in the 50s for some time. So 
some of our economic reads are not as dire as some would expect. Not to mention, we've also had incredibly strong jobs data out of the United States despite expectations for cooling. Claims continue to be relatively under control. Jolt's job openings are slowing, but they're not crashing. Uh, wage growth is, is relatively steady. Unemployment rate remains low overall. So the point here is the economy out of the US is looking pretty strong. So if I'm gonna take metals right now, I'm gonna lean more to the raw materials uh, that could be in demand should we continue to see a strong economy. I hope that makes sense. And if it did, do me a quick favor, hit like on this video if this concept, if fundamentals that I'm, I'm breaking down here for you are helpful. If you'd like me to continue making this video or these videos, the best thing you could do is hit the thumbs up button. I always look at the like count to see how well a video resonated so that I can better improve my videos for you constantly. That's the goal on the channel. And while I don't have a specific position open on gold anymore, I took profits this week. Like I actually trailed out of my, my trade right here, which was a little painful after, as the market ripped past. But I held the trade for two months between the diff two different positions that I took. It was a really profitable position for me. And I wish I had more of them like that. That trade on gold for me was a rock star. If you guys saw it, um, I ended up closing about a $19,000 profit on my gold positions uh, trading GLD, the ETF. Anyways, uh, current price action, what we have here is, uh, you know, price coming down into support. And uh, to me, you might say that was big rejection. I would say you still got an upward trend. The bulls, the bulls have less to prove than the bears, in my opinion. Bears have to prove themselves. They have to start breaking support levels. They can't, you can't just shout, oh, we've, we've sold off. That we can't, you can't shout victory if you're not even able to break support levels, right? I'm not saying they can't. They totally potentially could this week if we see, you know, some dollar strength continue or perhaps geopolitical tensions cool off. Yeah, gold might start to sell off. Uh, but again, the, the burden is on the bears, not on the bulls. The bulls are in an uptrend. The bulls continue to look good. So that is why also part of the reason I like the price action on silver. I actually picked up a position. And uh, while my entry ended up looking a little silly right afterwards, I'm still in the trade. And if I get stopped out on this position, I'll be willing to try again, I think, uh, as long as the economic outlook for the, the US looks so strong. I like the idea of being long commodities, um, even if that means rate cuts might get pushed back a little bit. I like some of the more industrial commodities to stay long, like oil, gold, etc. Speaking of oil, I'll show you guys my oil position. I am still long oil. This is another one that's been a really great trade for me. Um, I'll show you the P&L as well. So let me just pull this up here. Um, so here's silver and gold. So I'm down $123 on silver and I'm up 11,000 on oil since I initially took this trade uh, back in March. So um, oil continues to look really strong and it's also one of the top setups on the edge finder. If I add really quick, Let's just add oil to the picture here. So you can see oil is also getting a lot of the same benefits as some of these other um, you know, commodities, the industrial metals that, that we look at. So um, you know, oil getting a bullish read overall on strong economic data out of the US. I'll stay long unless we break support. Four hour chart here is my support zone. Stop loss has been trailed, like I said, around 84.50. So um, that trade has been also called out in our Discord channel where we share all trades. By the way, plug for that is also down below in the description if you wanna see the trades being shared. And while I'm on the subject, I just figured I'd show you what the, the Discord looks like. So every trade that I take, commodities, index, currencies, whatever I'm trading, I share all of it inside of the Discord. If you'd like to get a discount for uh, being a subscriber here on YouTube, there's information for that linked down below in the description. Part of the reason I continue to like commodities so much too is because inflation seems to be sticky and in an inflation heavy uh, environment, prices go up and that includes commodities. And it's kind of like this vicious, you know, vicious repeating cycle where commodity prices go up, causes prices to go up, prices go up, cause commodities to go up and they just kind of keep going. Um, that being said, I trade the environment I'm in. And so for me right now, what that means is, you know, inflation staying sticky from this past week's CPI data keeps me very convicted on things like oil, silver, copper, you know, et cetera. Um, that being said, it also adds a little bit of context to why I like, you know, high growth areas of the stock market over other areas. Because again, I, I think a lot of areas that are relying on rate cuts could be waiting too long. Uh, you know, maybe it's just better for me, in my opinion, to trade what I'm in, right? The environment we're in is strong economy, high inflation. So in that environment, I like the idea of staying long industrial commodities and uh, generally being more focused on 
tech. Anyways, um, this is the inflation story, and uh, that's something that I think is, is a persistent uh, kind of reality of the market right now is inflation is sticky, and we don't know when rate cuts are coming. That being said, relative to its peers like the UK and Europe, the dollar looks strong here in my opinion because with inflation falling in the UK, inflation falling in Europe, but inflation sticky in the US, what that says is rate cuts might come sooner for those places than it does for the US. And that means US dollar looks strong. Remember, rate cuts are weak for a currency, rate hikes are strong for a currency in nine times out of 10. In this situation, um, if we see rate cuts coming for those places, but not for the US, the US dollar suddenly looks relatively attractive to its peers, which is exactly why if you've been watching the dollar index, it's breaking out massively. And for my currency traders in the audience, let me know where, you are, where you're at. Uh, if you guys could comment down below, what do you guys trade the most? What's your favorite thing to trade? If you comment it down below, I'll try and heart your comment just to let you know I saw it. Um, but yeah, I'm curious what your favorite currency pair or commodity or index, what do you guys trade? Do you trade stocks? I feel like my audience has gone way more diverse. It is like uh, it is like the United States of America over here. We are super diverse in terms of what people trade. Uh, we got people who trade currencies, futures, commodities. Uh, it's awesome. Anyways, the dollar index here, and and by the way, the cool thing is what unites us all: fundamentals, because that's what really moves the market, and that is the whole point of me talking about it so much in these videos. Trust me, uh, I didn't go through all this learning about the economy stuff for. Well, I kind of did it for fun, but I also did it because I know that that's the real force behind the markets. It's a, you're able to, once you understand fundamentals thoroughly, you understand why all the moves are happening the way they move. There's no more, it's manipulated talk. It's just, oh yeah, the fundamentals are really talking. Anyways, um, dollar index broke big time to the upside, broke 105, really impressive move here. And to me, the dollar index is a, is a buy on pullbacks. That's my opinion. I lean towards uh, getting long on the dollar over Europe, over UK, over the yen. At this time, that is also being reflected in our algorithm as it should, right? The algorithm is built here to spot fundamental biases. So let's go to our major currency pairs for a moment. And you can see uniformly, it's been a minute. This is not since 2022, guys, that I've seen this on the edge finder. We have not seen uniformity in bullishness for the dollar since 2022, when the edge finder called out one of the biggest bull market moves on the dollar index in years. We saw a massive spike in 2022 when the Fed was uh, rapidly rate hiking relative to its peers. Perhaps it is uh, rapidly going to, uh, well, maybe we're gonna see it not so rapidly cut interest rates relative to its peers. And that's another bullish story for the dollar. Until proven otherwise, I'm trading what I'm seeing. The edge finder's helping me spot it. I'm looking for these uh, these setups here. Generally speaking, I pretty much like everything against the dollar uh, in favor of the dollar. Very, very interesting to see such a uniform. This is the first time, like I said, I've seen this in a long time. And um, you know, it's not the, the onset of this signal. The edge finder's been bullish on the dollar for a few weeks now. Uh, it's just cool to now finally see all of it lining up bullish for the dollar. Very, very curious to see that. Let's take a look at some charts here, specifically uh, Euro USD, for example. The Euro dollar broke through the lows. Beautiful breakout here. Retests look attractive, straight up uh, for me. Uh, until until something changes, I favor the dollar over the US, uh, the Euro. Uh, take a look at the pound, same story. 38.2% retracement looks interesting for a possible sell setup. And again, um, we're just going to keep looking for those setups uh, as long as the edge finder continues to, to provide that bias. Here's an overview of retail positioning. What this shows you, of course, is what retail traders on average are doing relative to the data that we pull in on all of them. So, um, you know, what we can see is, is certain areas, the retail traders are much more uh, long. We take that as a contrarian signal. And if retail traders are much more short, we take that as a contrarian bullish signal. So take that as you will. If you have the edge finder, you can play around with this and add more or less of what you wanna see. If you just wanna look at major currency pairs, just select it. Again, this top right thing is your friend. You can change it however you'd like uh, if you have a copy of the edge finder. Again, at this point, guys, I'm 24 minutes into this video. Uh, and I just wanted to remind you, again, we are doing our biggest sale of the year. This product, uh, I cannot brag enough about how good it is. It's not just my, my 
thinking that built this thing. It's the combination of our audience who has contributed in several surveys. People who love the Edge Finder have helped us build this thing into a better product um, with retail positioning, with smart money indicator, uh, the commitment of traders data, fundamental charts. We are on a roll with this thing and it's all thanks to our team behind the scenes and you guys who have helped us to build this tool into what it is. Get yourself 40% off. Click the link down below in the description. And uh, I also want to keep going here. We're not done. Put call ratio uh, showed that the kind of weighting of puts came in heavy. A lot of puts were bought in recent uh, volume action. Of course, now, if you know anything about options, puts are bearish bets, calls are bullish ones. And so uh, a sort, sort of swing into a demand for puts is very interesting to see. At the same time, uh, investor sentiment shifted a bit here in the latest report. What we can see here is that the latest survey showed an uptick in bearishness uh, and in uh, neutrality. And at the same time, we saw uh, bullishness actually declined. So some shift in sentiment around the financial market for sure. I also wanted to introduce a new um, component to my videos. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see more of this, um, but I'm going to be going through here some sectors really quick. So this is the technology sector ETF XLK. I plan on selling puts on this if we do start to see a little bit of a sell off. Uh, I am bullish overall and I'll show you. I use this uh, these these indicators here on the screen here. Uh, nothing super fancy, but for those of you guys who watch my um, my options trading strategy, you know, I typically look for, um, you know, sectors. That's mostly what I play. I play like XLY, XLK, um, and I'm basically looking to wheel strategy these things. If you don't know what all that means, don't worry. Uh, you can search up Trader Nick wheel strategy on YouTube if you want to learn my option strategy. It's relatively simple, um, but then I incorporate fundamental analysis into it. Anyways, I've got blue in blue marked areas of the economy that I'm a little bit more interested in right now. Um, XLK tech ETF, uh, the, the tech ETF is one that I like uh, because of course it carries uh, high growth names. And while this is a premium area of the market, meaning it's trading for high valuations on average, I still like it over other ones, especially if we're going to see interest rates remain higher for longer. I, you know, I, I think that um, I want to be in areas of the economy that are that are growing despite higher interest rates, not ones that are reliant on rate cuts. So XLY, right, I've sold puts. This actually expired on Friday, just slightly out of the money. What that means is I have to do nothing. So I sold these puts and I collected a premium for selling these puts, which is really great. I collected $500 for selling this put a couple, you know, a week or so back. And now I don't have to do anything. I just collected a premium. What I plan to do on this one is, you know, if we dip oversold again, I will actually sell more puts and see if I can even get a better fill on that position. Um, in terms of XLP, these are really conservative areas, consumer staples. Financials, I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, if they continue to sell off, I may actually look to sell puts on um, the financial uh, sector as well. Real estate, not really interested. This is a very interest rate sensitive area. So are financials though. So this one, I'd really just wait for a really, really oversold status. XLRE, probably not a big one for me. Real estate, not my favorite area. Industrials, I am interested. Industrials, of course, um, are going to see if the economy continues to expand, it's going to be good for industrials overall. So I'm looking for an opportunity to sell some puts. I may sell puts uh, going into this week, which could mean getting assigned some, some shares, which would be great. XLV, this is a, more of a contrarian one because this is a sensitive area in terms of rates. Uh, this is a very debt you know, heavy area. So higher interest rates could be unattractive um, for this area. That being said, this is a more contrarian play. I've sold puts on this one and it does look like uh, with the X date of 419, if this market continues to sell off, I may get assigned the shares, which will be fine. And I wouldn't mind owning it in the portfolio uh, that I do, of course, do my options and my momentum trading in. I trade both two strategies, a momentum trading strategy and an option selling mean reversion strategy where I'm looking to basically uh, buy, build positions, sell covered calls. It's kind of like an active trading slash investing style that I do. And I talk about within our Discord channel. If you're interested in that stuff, consider joining the Discord down below in the description. Also, I'll show you the broker that I'm using for this. So here's a list of my current positions on Webull, which is the brokerage that I use to trade options. So you can see here some of the ETFs that I've sold. 
um, puts on and I currently have no positions assigned. Uh, however, uh, a couple of them expired. So on Friday, I will make full premium on XLY. I ignore this, this floating loss that is just because uh, liquidity kind of dries up on the options market and it gives you some weird quotes right at the close. But we are above 177, a bat expiration date, which means I will collect the full premium of about $500. I sold for 50 cents, 10 contracts, that's $500 in profit that I will collect and not, I didn't have to do anything. TLT, this is one that's not going well for me. This is actually going poorly. I've sold puts on TLT and with strong economic data, CPI and NFP, it went against me. And now, you know, interest rates uh, are expected to not be cut as soon. That's not great for bond yields. Bonds dropped in value. TLT, I'm underwater on that position and planning to kind of just wheel strategy and deal with that one. So there it is. Also, if you're outside of the US and you're looking to trade uh, with this broker, I, I think it's available to some, some places like Australia, I think Singapore, the UK. You can check down below in the description, but if you can't use Weeble, there's other great brokerages that are linked down below in the description that will actually allow you to trade directly on tradingview.com. You can find all of those brokers down below in the description. Please note, these are referral links, and if you choose to use them, you'll be supporting my channel, and I very very much appreciate it. This was a long one, guys. We went 30 minutes. So uh, if you made it to 30 minutes, do me a quick favor. Type the word 30, uh, Type comment 30 minute gang. If you made it to the 30 minute mark, you are a real one. And I really just want to say, personally, I very much appreciate you watching my content. I know there's a million content creators out there. I'm not, you know, your traditional YouTuber. I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm just sharing my thoughts and opinions here. And I've had so much fun over the years doing it. If you made it to the 30 minute club, thank you so much for watching this video. I very much appreciate it. And I hope you have a great trading week ahead. See you guys.